Well, I've come here to see firsthand the situation of the workers here who are striking for a decent wage, for decent working conditions. And I come here also to bring them the words of support of the American labor movement. Uh, I'm going to make a commitment to them at their strike meeting tonight that my union, the UAW, and the Industrial Union Department, of which I'm also president, we will pledge $5,000 a month to these workers for as long as it takes to win their strike. Because all these workers are asking is that they get their share of the good things of life. Do you see this as the prime area in the country for organizing farm workers? Well, I believe that what happens here will be the beginning of the organization of other farm workers. Now, we're not talking about workers who work on little family-sized farms. These workers work for big industry. They are the factory workers in the fields, and they are entitled to the right to bargain about their wages and their working conditions with their employers, just like millions of other workers in America enjoy the benefits of collective bargaining. And this is the fundamental fight. It's a fundamental fight of whether we have two classes of economic citizenship in America, one for the workers who enjoy collective bargaining, who have decent wages, who have decent working conditions, who have the kind of protection during periods of unemployment, and another class, second-class citizens. That's what these people are. And they are fighting to become first-class economic citizens. And this is not their fight alone. It is the fight of every organized worker. It is the fight of every American he, who believes in hum human decency. And that's why I'm here. Now let me just say uh, one word of warning. This is not going to be done overnight. This is not going to be done because this subcommittee comes out here and holds hearings. That you're going to expect uh, five days from now, or a week from now, or two weeks from now, that these problems are going to disappear. Because that's not what's going to happen. We can go back and we can study laws, and there's going to be suggestions and recommendations back and forth as to what needs to be done. But it's not going to disappear overnight. Do you think the farm worker is getting a raw deal presently? I think that the farm worker here in the United States has not uh, received the uh, benefits of the rest of our society that the other workers have. We want them to know that we're here, we're alive, and we'd like to remind them that however powerful and however strong they may be and however, and however rich they may be, that if we, the farm workers, do not till the soil and plant the seed and harvest the food, they would not be able to eat.
Beautiful, huh? Come on. Well, we have uh, many cases, many affidavits of cases where workers have been uh, uh, poisoned by pesticides, where they have serious illnesses. It's almost, you might say, an everyday working condition with farm workers. And uh, also, there's, of course, many reports of deaths that have been caused by pesticides. But isn't that just sort of an occupational hazard? Is there anything that can be done about it? Well, we, it is, right now it is an occupational hazard, and uh, we don't uh, think that uh, the poisoning and the deaths should be to the extent, should occur to the extent that they are occurring now. Uh, we believe that something can be done about this, but of course in order to do this, we have to have the cooperation of the employers.